Once upon a time, a giant star was dying. For millions of years, it had been fusing together hydrogen atoms into helium. This process made the star shine. But most importantly, it counteracted the star's own gravity. When the star started to run out of hydrogen, it began fusing helium into heavier elements, such as carbon and oxygen. One day, the star completely ran out of things to burn. And with nothing pushing back against gravity, the star collapsed and imploded. After a life millions of years long, its collapse took a mere fraction of a second. The rebound of the implosion resulted in one of the most extreme events in our universe, a supernova. It completely annihilated anything in its surroundings and lit up the universe. But in its death, something new was born. Heavy elements like silicon, sulfur and iron were blasted into space. Millions of years later, the shockwave passed through a cloud of dust, squeezing and stretching it and making it collapse in on itself. The pool of gravity started forming clumps, and in the center, the pressure mounted high enough to start fusing hydrogen into helium. The death of our giant star resulted in the birth of another, our sun. The cloud of dust started swirling around our sun, forming a system of planets. One of them was our Earth. Although that baby Earth looked nothing like it does today. It had an unbreathable atmosphere and a surface of molten lava. The planet was shocked by the impacts of asteroids, comets and even other planets. One such planet was Fia, which was the size of current day's Mars. Fia crashed into Earth, obliterating itself and much of the Earth in the process, blasting the debris into space. The debris then formed the rings around the Earth, much like Saturn has today. But eventually the rings coalesced into what's now known as the Moon. All of this happened some 4.6 billion years ago. Now millions of years later, the Earth had finally cooled down a bit. Enough for the water, brought to Earth by comets, to condense and fall as rain. It rained for millions of years, creating the first oceans, or should I say, ocean. There was no land. The earth, which started as a ball of fire, was now a big ball of water. Over time, any planet will settle out into different layers, with the heavier elements like nickel and iron sinking to the core, and the lighter elements staying at the surface. Today, the Earth's core is a sphere of liquid metal, kept hot by gravity. Due to the spin of the Earth, a giant magnetic field is formed, reaching out into space and protecting us from high energy charged particles. On top of the molten core are the less dense layers, which are covered by pieces of crust, the tectonic plates. They are forever moving around, carving deep ocean trenches and thrusting out towering mountain ranges. It's what creates new land. During all of this, some 4 billion years ago, life itself actually started. Life began in the depths of the ocean near hydrothermal vents, which released boiling streams of water filled with nutrients. But it was exactly what the first organisms needed. The first living things were simple. Microscopic membranes that used energy from the vents to procreate. 3.7 billion years ago, life had reached the surface waters. By 3.4 billion years ago, the Earth's waters consisted of a greenish slime, made from cyanobacteria, which are the same bacteria that give the green scum in your pond today. They have been on our Earth for over 3 billion years, which is absolutely crazy. In those early days, there was hardly any oxygen in the air. And without the corresponding ozone layer, ultraviolet light sterilized anything on the surface, or just below the water. The cyanobacteria evolved pigments to protect themselves by absorbing the rays. The energy from this absorption was then used to facilitate chemical processes, and photosynthesis started. The bacteria started separating water into hydrogen and oxygen, creating a lot of energy for other reactions in the process. But there's a catch. Photosynthesis produces one of the deadliest side products known to the universe. Free oxygen, a highly, highly reactive substance. Life back in the early days had evolved without free oxygen around and was not prepared for it. The oxygen caused the world's first mass extinction event, 
wiping out 99.5% of all life. This period between 2.4 and 2.1 billion years ago is the Great Oxidation Event. Around the same time, methane and carbon dioxide were being absorbed from the atmosphere by rocks. These gases are what keep the Earth warm by trapping the sun's light. And without them, the Earth fell into its very first ice age. Thick layers of ice covered the entire planet for 300 million years. And yet, life still managed to thrive. Many organisms died, but life as always evolved. For the first 2 billion years, life on Earth consisted of bacterial cells. Seemingly simple organisms, but they can adapt to almost any circumstance. Some bacteria can live in crude oil, or others thrive on nuclear waste. Some bacteria can even survive in the vacuum of space. Vast colonies of different bacteria can also function together, trading waste products and genes with each other. This actually was a tendency that bacterial colonies used to have. And this tendency of cohabitating led to the next revolution. Bacteria started living together in a nucleated cell. Some 2 billion years ago, different bacteria that relied on each other started living in the same membrane. Each bacteria focuses just on one aspect. Cyanobacteria became chloroplasts and others formed the rest of the cell. Life for the colony became a lot more efficient and established a new complexity of life. The eukaryotic cell. Eukaryotic cells reproduce by having two parents and exchanging genetic material. The genes are then mixed and matched and create the blueprint for the offspring. Sex was born. No longer was the offspring a mere copy of the parents. And with this, diversity flourished. Over time, a lot of different eukaryotes evolved. Then, some of them started congregating, making multicellular organisms, some 1200 to 900 million years ago. Some 750 million years ago, all the land was amassed in one supercontinent, Rodinia. And due to the ever-shifting tectonic plates, the supercontinent started breaking apart, sending the planet into a series of ice ages, forcing life of the day through another series of evolution. But once again, life rose to the challenge, with the evolution of seaweeds, fungi and algae, showing that whatever the circumstances may be, life has adapted, overcome and ultimately thrived.